with regards to Hazrat Ishmael and Hazrat Mustafa, um, one Christian reading the Holy Quran said that uh, the descendants of Isaac is given, but not the descendants of Ishmael. Now, <coughs> the Christians say this, so this is my, um, my Isaac. I left my shock here. Isaac is given, and Hazrat Ishmael is not given. And they already don't believe that, uh, or some of them don't believe that Hazrat Ishmael is blessed, his seed is blessed. So they, ca they cannot see that how um, Muhammad could be a prophet or could be the blessed seed. So <coughs> is there any short answer to that? I, I spent a quite a long time and still uh, they were not convinced. most important important principle to be kept in mind in the Quran the question is this that uh, the validity of the question has to be challenged to be challenged to begin with on common sense on uh, our knowledge of history if this is acceptable it might have been said in, in Bible even if you don't debate that I mean even otherwise it can be completely rejected as a deliberate question. <coughs> if it is correct what the Bible says that only the chosen son of Abraham was Isaac and the prophethood was to remain within the descendants of Isaac, then it would also be inferred that Allah was not the creator of the rest of the world. He left the entire world completely unattended and he was the creator of only a certain people and of that only a certain line. <coughs> this is not acceptable to any human being normally because uh, the concept of God and the concept of his creation and the concept of his the concept of prophethood they all become so limited and uh, they don't mean anything for the rest of the world. So it has to be rejected outright, this question. Why should it be? If Allah is the owner and the creator of the universe, if it is for him to decide every issue, then how can one impose it upon him that he should create the prophethood from a certain lineage and he should restrict the prophethood to a certain to certain descendants of the prophethood? You know, anything of that nature is it putting a restriction upon Allah. Yeah, but the thing is that if the Jews accepted Jesus as the Messiah, then possibly the Holy Prophet would have come from the, uh, the Jews. Why? Yeah. Um, this is what I'm discussing. The Holy Quran has mentioned a retort to all questions of this nature. And that is the main principle to which one must take. The Holy Quran deals in one sweep of the hand with all the questions belonging to this category. It says, People from various, various walks of life, from various schools of thought, they come and uh, make different demands. Some say that he should be the descendant, the new prophet should be the descendant of so and so. And some say that he should hail from that and that city. And some say he should be from that and that people and nation or religion. So the demands from all over the world vary and they are different. Then the issue is only this. Who is going to decide whom Allah should give his blessings? Is it Allah or somebody else? If Allah is free to choose, let him choose. Because it is not just their point of view. The fact is the Holy Quran enlarges this question in the context of many other demands. The Arab who said he should have hailed from that city, that big city and that big city, the twin big cities. Like the Muslims today demand that the Mahdi should have come from the two big cities, Mecca and Medina. At that time when Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa appeared, the two big cities were not Mecca and Medina. They were two different cities. So 
the demands, if you further go out of the uh, Middle East and go to India, the demand there will be that uh, the prophet or the final prophet or the final, let's say, manifestation of God was to appear from among the Brahmins. And the Buddhists would say, the final uh, <coughs> blessing the Vada was to be shown, was to be shown to the descendants of uh, Buddha and so the descendants of uh, Confucius and so the descendants, descendants of uh, the Roaster. It goes on and on. So how can you handle each one of them without there being a central weapon of defense available to you which would hit them all together and with the same selection. That, that central weapon has been mentioned in the Holy Quran. Then the question of who is going to be chosen by Allah rests with Allah and he will not be dictated to by human beings. So that solves the, the, the attack upon Islam from all sides. Secondly, from the biblical point of view, too, you should be well versed and you should be capable of defending the position of Islam. The fact is that Hazrat Ismail is mentioned in the Bible as a blessed son, as revealed to Hazrat Muhammad Hazrat Ibrahim before his birth, and he is promised of unlimited bounties by Allah. And when you remember, it is said that when Abraham prayed for a son and he was uh, given the glad tidings of Isaac, you know what he said? He said, Tere Hanur in it says, Tere Hanur Ismail ki jitare. In your presence, it suffices me that Ishmael be given a long life. That particular uh, verse of the Holy of the Bible decides the issue not only in this respect, the, in the respect of the question you have asked, but in other respects as well. They claim that Isaac was the first son. And if Isaac was the first son, how could Abraham reply after they received receiving the glad tidings about Isaac? That they do is my that is my, the long life of which my suffice to be if you provide me this long life. That he is my the first fall. And as a first fall, he was recognized as the first official representative of Abraham. If other Abraham had not looked at him as the true descendant and inheritor, should have shown great pleasure at the fact that although I was given a son before, but he having been born out of a, um, I mean, out of a lady, let's say, non that the Huh? Yes. No, no, Monument, well, exactly, that's right. Yes. I'm talking, I was thinking of it. Because they claim that because Ismail was born out of a born woman, so he could not inherit the blessings of a prophet. That is the first, first step they take in that direction. Now, we can come to that through this saying of Ismail. If Hazrat Ibrahim was of this opinion as the Christians would have us believe he was, then when the glad tiding of Isaac was given to him, he shouldn't have said that. That Ismail was quite enough for him. That's an additional blessing. Because Ismail, having been born of a born woman, could not have been enough for, it, for Abraham, Abraham if he had not believed that he would inherit his blessings of Isaac. But there was a discontinuation from Ishmael to Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa. Yes. But in the line of Isaac, uh, there was a lot of prophets in, in, in the line of Isaac. 
So she was waiting on actually the discontinuation from Ishmael to Muhammad. Whereas the in the line in the other line, that, that, was that, that, that is quite fine. Or like that doesn't make any difference at all. The fact is that there is a continuity observable of course in the line of what I said. But then at the time of Jesus Christ, it is abundant. And it was prophecy by other prophets as well, like Moses that uh, from among your brethren, Allah would raise a great prophet. So that shows there was one prophet to offset the weight of an entire line of prophets. He was to be so great. And he was to be born from among the brothers, not uh, the cousins in fact, not the direct line of Isaac. And then also the parable of uh, the vineyard, which has been mentioned in the New Testament. You, you, you know the, the, the you know that parable. That is also very clear that someone else is going to come, and this time it is not going to be the son, but the father himself. That shows that relationship of the Muhammad peace be upon him to the rest of the rest of the prophets was like this. His coming was the coming of God Himself. The coming of Jesus Christ was by the maximum extension of imagination, like the coming of a son. And this is what has been described in the parable very clearly. So it doesn't make any difference whether there is, there is a long lineage of prophets before Him or not. The question is the weight which He takes is so great that compared to that, the rest of the prophets all put together don't carry that much weight. This is in essence which has been disclosed by Bible itself in so many places, in so many forms. So, I hope you follow. Right, so take a minute after, after the question has been asked from the man side. So, that has been the trouble of the question explaining the But I want to know, how Jesus actually became a descendant of the Brahman, because there's no proof from the Bible at all that he was descended from the Brahman. So how is it possible for us to... No, no, how is it possible for the Christians to prove that? Well, that, is, that, 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 that was my point. There's no way in the Bible to find out that Jesus was actually the descendant of the Brahman. According to them, he was a descendant of Allah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> 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 that's, 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 that's,